challenges that we often will face would be, you know, patient follow up. We're booked out for so many months at a time. And so I think patients may get lost to follow up. Um, I think in the last few years, medication shortages have become a big issue, of course, um, with the GLP-1 shortages. But even these days, it's been insulin shortages. So it's been... Um, you know, just a lot of work from our staff standpoint and burnout from that end. Um, unfortunately, I think minorities um, tend to get hit the worst. And, and so I think, you know, a couple things would be, you know, language barriers, um, potentially insurance coverage, um, affordability of medications, um, and, you know, just difficulty following up or navigating a challenging healthcare system. And so I think, you um, you know, unfortunately, our minorities do tend to, you know, suffer the most with some of these chronic health conditions. And unfortunately, we then see the sequela of um, long term uncontrolled diabetes as well in those populations. It's a chronic disease, right? So this is long term follow up for patients. And so I think making sure that we you know, are providing ongoing care um, and and not necessarily letting patients fall through the cracks, I think is is really important here. Making sure that people are on top of, you know, regular eye checkups when they have diabetes, making sure that their kidney function is um, mm -hmm. monitored after, making sure that mm -hmm. their feet are looked at um, regularly. Diabetic foot ulcers are extremely common um, and probably one of the number one ways as to how somebody potentially could end up with an amputation or, you know, like a foot infection. And so um, podiatrists are very valuable in terms of making sure, um, especially in the world of diabetes, that like diabetic foot care is appropriate. For example, we don't necessarily recommend patients cut their own toenails because if you suddenly, you know, cut the skin that could introduce infection. And for someone with diabetes, they don't necessarily clear that infection as well as someone that does not have diabetes. Um, for those who might be developing, you know, numbness, um, like neuropathy from diabetes, you could get like good, like shoe inserts to make sure that your feet are protected and not rubbing in various like areas of your foot. And because of neuropathy, you might not notice, you know, the skin breakdown in certain parts of your foot. Um, it, you know, because of neuropathy, it, it's shocking how many people may not notice that there's an oozing ulcer at the bottom of your foot, right? Um, and, and so it's, um, it's very, very crucial to make sure one that, you know, patients are getting regular foot checks in clinic, but then also um, that they're following up, uh, you know, with our with the podiatry team with their eye doctors, um, etc. So it, mm -hmm. you know, those folks are just as important um, um, in the diabetes team as um, anybody else. Because of the chronicity of the disease process, mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't necessarily following up with those things. And diabetic eye disease, nerve disease, kidney disease um, are like awful, right? The consequences are awful. Um, we see patients who at any stage of life have, you know, become dependent on dialysis because their diabetes was, you know, uncontrolled or losing limbs or toes. And, and so, you know, um, potentially increasing the risk of stroke and heart attack. All of these things are long-term like macrovascular and ma microvascular complications, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, this is exactly why following up regularly is that important because we make sure at every visit that all those things are checked off, that patients are getting adequate follow-up, um, you know, to make sure that we're, we're monitoring for that. And, and if potentially, you know, the protein in their urine rises or their kidney function has taken a hit, like that's where we need to get our other team members like nephrology involved, or, you know, do they need to see cardiology because their cholesterol levels are going up and they're, you know, at a higher risk for heart disease, whatever that might be. So, um, I think that it is really health maintenance um, involves more than just like making sure your blood sugars are appropriate. Unfortunately, with kind of our, our burdened healthcare system right now, uh, I think it is getting more and more difficult for patients to get in to see primary care. Um, the majority of patients with diabetes are taken care of by primary care doctors. Um, and so I think that, uh, with primary care being as burdened as it is right now, um, I think chronic disease management has been challenging, um, especially in the setting, again, of like medication shortages and lack of follow-up available. Um, 
And so being able to get in once a year, you know, with your physician, um, especially when you have an ongoing chronic disease, it, it is challenging. And so I think, you know, one is when a patient does need to be referred out, like obviously like the patient needs to follow up with the specialist, but I think creating a team for the patient um, so that they don't necessarily fall through the cracks, I think is important. Um, I think it's, it's, of course, it's helpful to be able to be in communication with the patient's cardiologist or, you know, whoever is uh, taking care of that patient, because potentially that uncontrolled diabetes, you know, may have increased that patient's risk of having that coronary event. So, you know, what are we going to do to decrease further events or, you know, so I think that it takes a big, very, very collaborative approach. I think it, it really um, is important to utilize our diabetic educators and our dietitians as well in the in the long term management. Um, our pharmacists, especially when navigating um, um, our, all these medication shortages um, and helping patients with like side effect management and things like that. And so, we we really need to be embracing um, more like help from the healthcare system in terms of having our pharmacists um, and our, our, our dietitians and diabetic educators on the team. Physicians um, or like advanced practice providers don't necessarily have that level of bandwidth anymore. It, it's, it's really important for patients to make sure that they are in communication with us, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we got to meet each other halfway. And, and so I think that is one thing because um, I think patients tend to either, you know, not contact us or let us know that something's going on until, you know, their next visit, which might be six months later, or if they ran out of medication or something like that. So I think um, ongoing communication is, is very, very key. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think really kind of becoming one's own best advocate is also very key. And so I think, you know, again, um, this is potentially where minorities or like people who potentially don't speak the language as well might potentially fall through the cracks because figuring out how to navigate that or how to contact or how to like access this portal and, you know, all those things I think are barriers. Um, and I think that that leads to, you know, some of these long-term um, ups and downs with like disease management. Um, but, you know, I think like that's where, again, like, you know, patient liaisons can be helpful. Um, it doesn't have to be a clinical person, but potentially following up, you know, to make sure is the patient okay? Are they coming in for their visit? You know, what do they need to make sure that they're well set up for this visit? Um, I, I think that, that that could be a very important thing. A doctor cannot work isolated. You need the support team to make sure, you know, the patient's well-being is looked after.